So I did over the break have a chance to make butter mochi and now I'm like on it. It's not super sweet, but it has like the chewy satisfaction of candy, which I love. And I love like not having to buy gummy candies to get that satisfaction. Like if I have a candy craving, butter mochi is going to be the go-to. Welcome to Didn't I Just Feed You? A podcast about feeding kids. Hi, I'm Megan. And I am Stacy. Hey guys, today we're going to be discussing what we are cooking and eating now for the new year. But before we dive into all of that, this is your weekly reminder that we have the best community on the internet and we would love for you to join us. Yes, there is a free area that absolutely anyone can join with just an email address. And then there's also a supporting group that gives you more access to recipe ideas, private Q&As with both of us, as well as exclusive episodes every month and a quarterly cocktail hour with a huge giveaway. Huge. And if you can't join our community or become a supporting member right now, you can always support Didn't I Just Feed You by leaving a rating or a review or both. Okay. Let's talk about what you've been cooking, Billis. Let's do it. January is always a weird time in the world of food, not just food media, but like what you want to eat because it's like deep winter. But are you also tired of like sweets and stews like I am? Yes, totally. And just like rich foods in general. And, you know, we talk about this a lot, the whole like diet culture intensity in January. And so I don't want to contribute to that, but I do think that there is a seasonality and there are rhythms to the way that all of us eat, at least me, I'll just speak for myself. And (laughs) I do have this feeling in January where I'm like, oh my gosh, please give me something fresh and crunchy. (laughs) I can't, (laughs) like, I just need something fresh in my mouth, you know, which is how you end up focusing on winter salads and, you know, stuff that might seem diet culture, diet cultural, can't say it today, Megan. Oh my (laughs) God. Marble mouth. But I'm not necessarily promoting that for anybody else, but that is the way I feel. And speaking of baking, because I'm really curious to hear your take on it. I'm just sort of sick of sugar. I'm going to talk about like some simple desserts because, you know, my kids eat dessert every single night. But the kicker is that Isaac's birthday is January 5th, man. We have the same thing because we run right from Christmas, New Year's to Ella's birthday. And then it just feels like Like, it's February. Yes, I don't want to cook for you. I don't want to get you any more (laughs) gifts. But I I don't even feel like eating cake. Yes, yes. Well, one thing I'd like to throw at you is that baking doesn't always have to be sweet. You can do savory baking also and we can get into that but i have this weird like when you're like i just want something fresh and kind of crunchy i know that you mean like the opposite of that is like soft brazy long cooking but for some reason i was like what is is the opposite not unfresh (laughs) <laughs> and soft. Like, what have we been eating all winter? I don't long? know. I don't know. I feel like we've been eating like soupy, warm, yeah, like braised. Yes, you yes. know, yeah, soft. Even just like a grilled steak on salad, which sounds so seasonally inappropriate, sounds so good to me right now. But does it though, because grilling in the winter, unless you're like in the Midwest and you're just buried in, or I should say not just the Midwest, anywhere where you're just like buried in snow and maybe you can't get to your grill. I actually love grilling in the winter time, like to get outside and just do a quick steak. I mean, that sounds really good. To I me right totally now too. agree. And when I said grilling, I actually meant like whether you grill it or you yes. like do it in the pan and finish in the oven, whatever. But I actually like grilling too. And I'll tell you why this is so I'm revealing so too much. I'm embarrassed for myself. But sometimes in this deep part of winter, there are days when I barely go outside. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So like going to get the grill is like, oh, oh, fresh air. Like I feel alive. I'm a person who, you know, even though I've been in sweats all day in my cocoon of a home, (laughs) 
I'm like, yes, there's a world and there's fresh air. It's nice. (laughs) It's only funny to me because I think of you as like very extroverted and a person who gets out a lot, especially like you live in New York City. It's easy for you to get out and like be doing something yes. in many ways, which is not to say Chattanooga is not easy access for me, but I am like such a homebody that I physically have to like schedule getting myself yeah. out of the house during the week besides like walking to the bus stop and walking the dogs, which I feel like doesn't quite count. Doing something outside has to be scheduled for me in January. January, Otherwise it is not happening. I want to be in the cozy cocoon with you. I get it. I do. I mean, it's true that I don't go long stretches, but I definitely have like days Days. where I'm just inside working. And especially my kids are older. I don't even have to walk to the bus stop. I know. I don't have to go inside. They make their way home. They make their way out. Like, and I'm just here. (laughs) You can always pajama food if you don't want to cook for yourself. Okay, so in your pajama sweats, it's that's what my kids call them. By the way, I love it. I think it's very cute. They're trying to distinguish between my like dumpier sweats (laughs) and my more stylish sweats. (laughs) So they're called pajama sweats. It's like the opposite of athleisure or something. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so in your pajama sweats in January, what are you cooking and eating right now? Okay, well, since we were talking about grilling. Yes. I'm going to start with Thai chicken burgers with quick pickled carrots. Mm. I think that there's a little bit of a theme to what I'm, what I've started cooking at the beginning of the year and what I hope to keep cooking this month. Okay. One is just like these fresh flavors. So these Thai chicken burgers feel a little bit lighter. You can grill them if you want to get your outside for a minute (laughs) Um, but you can also pan fry them that works or broil them whatever and then the quick pickled carrots are the best part of this and they have such a like bright herbaceous flavor and you just buy store-bought shredded pre-shredded carrots and you start by putting them in a bowl with some vinegar and sugar and salt and herbs and they sit there while you make the burgers and then they're ready by the time the burgers are done so it's just fast, easy. It feels a little lighter, brighter, which I think is a theme. Can I plus one on this recipe recommendation and suggest that anyone who makes this recipe just doubles the carrots because they keep really well in the fridge. And then you have something like super yummy to throw on a quick sandwich during the day or for a lunchbox. Um, They're really great because they have a little bit of heat to them, like on a taco. And it's one of those like, cook it once, eat it twice. So smart. Things. So smart. I should be doing that. And I don't. And I'm going well, to Well, there you know. go. There Pressure's go. on you now. Another like light, bright, easy flavors situation also involves my Instant Pot, which is another theme. Okay. I'm kind of tired. I did so much cooking and baking over the holidays. So uh, my Instant Pot Harissa Chicken, which is from Winner Winner Chicken Dinner, is another one that just, it has kind of, it yields a light tomato-based sauce that has a slightly different flavor profile than the more typical like Italian or barbecue chicken. So it feels like a nice little twist. It's a little bit tangy and it's very flexible. I serve it with couscous and like a chopped Greek salad, you know, just cucumbers, tomatoes, and feta cheese, sometimes chickpeas. But, you know, you can you can put it on a bun if you want. It's just really tasty and easy. We sometimes do it with like a smear of hummus on a piece of like flatbread or in a pita like pocket, which has been a great quick weeknight thing without having to make like another grain. Yes. You've already right? made the chicken and it's hanging out in the Instant Pot. Just make it into a sandwich or a wrap. So yummy. I'm going to stick with the Instant Pot as a theme too. Nikki Sizemore came on the show for her slow cooker book a while back. And she talked about slow cooker salmon. And I remember being like, "Mm, I'm going to try it because Nikki's a very talented seasoned cookbook author and recipe developer. 
but I'm not so sure about this. Like how salmon is so delicate. And if you overcook it, you know how you remember what it's called all the time. And I don't, the white stuff. I want to call albumin. it. The albumin. Yes. Thank yes. you. <laughs> right. I Something like that. I would, I'm second guessing whether that's it or not. But no, I think like, you're right. Yes. It's white, like protein that lives in like egg whites and also in the flesh of fish. Right. And so people see that and think that it's gross. It's not gross. It doesn't really have a flavor. It does mean your salmon's overcooked though. That, I mean, not always, but that is when it comes yeah. out. Right. Yes. So I was sure, cause I had actually tried, <laughs> I had tried an, another slow cooker salmon from another cookbook and it came out so awful that I never <laughs> shared it. Cause I, Listen, we all why have, would you? Yeah. And we all have stinkers in our cookbooks. Like that's just the way it goes. Sadly. I mean, you beat yourself up over it forever, but it happens. But Nikki's slow cooker salmon is really great. It comes out wonderfully. It's easy. And then she has a recipe and we'll link to both of these. They come together, a cucumber caper yogurt sauce mm -hmm. and quick pickled shallots. And again, those quick pickles give a nice, light, bright feeling to the dish. Yum. Um, have you ever read the tip that you can soak your salmon in salt water? Not quite as salty as a brine, but that that will prevent the weird white thing. I have, I have it because it creates that layer on top. It supposedly like denatures the proteins a little bit so that you don't get the coagulation that causes the weird white bubble up. I just can't imagine caring that much about what my salmon looked like I, that I would actually do that on a regular basis. It does work though. If it's something it it's like of a real concern, I tried it once for kitchen. Okay. I'll never so, do it, but I'm I will never it do works. it. I can't recommend <laughs> just like sometimes we can't recommend recipes, sometimes we can't recommend a tip. It's too yeah. fussy and no one will die eating the white stuff out of salmon. Uh, Anyways, 100%. moving on. What else are we, are we on the theme still of slow cooker? Well, I'm, I'm like hopping, I'm hopping around. Okay, okay. So now I'm going to use salmon to hop to another seafood. There's a recipe that I really enjoyed shrimp and crispy rice with citrus at Bon Appetit. Mm. It is citrus season. Shrimp is one of my favorites, although I tend to go in like phases with it. It's really weird. But of course, the recipe got me at crispy rice. So <laughs> that was <laughs> that was what it reminded me of the sheet pan bibimbap. Yes. From the New York Times, which I love and is also on we my both list. Love. It's yes. so good. I feel like we've mentioned it in so many episodes, but I want to shout out this recipe makes me think both of our two-part rice episode from 2021 and we did a whole thing about making seafood accessible to your whole family including picky eaters and shrimp is my go-to like it's it's fast cooking it's mild in flavor this recipe looks so right up my alley for Isn't shrimp it and my family it was yes. delicious and I love, I followed the recipe and I crisped the rice in a pan, mm -hmm. but you could also do the technique that comes from the bibimbap recipe where you just, as the rice is cooking, heat a sheet pan in the oven right, and then spread the cooked rice in a thin layer and put it back in the oven. And the rice that is in contact with the sheet pan, the hot sheet pan, and then has a little more time to cook will crisp up and that yeah. works as well. I love that method. And this would be a great recipe for leftover rice also because you're reheating it or like you're kind of, you're crisping it, whether you do it on the stove top or in the sheet pan, like you just recommended. Yes. Um, I love, love, love this recipe recommendation. Putting it on my list do for what it. to eat the rest of the month. Okay. Okay. So the, the rest of my, <laughs> the rest of mine actually, don't really fit the light and bright after I made such a big deal about it. So that's weird. Listen, you're allowed to that's like what weird. you like and crave what you crave without there being a theme. Bill is. Okay. Uh, pork chops with maple buttered apples. Okay. It sounds heavier than it feels. And it's like, you know, you can grill those pork chops again, or you can follow the recipe and do it in a pan. 
but it's like a lean protein. And then these apples that get nice and soft and are a great counterpoint to the pork chops that have a lot of that like fall winter flavor. So that, and somehow it doesn't feel heavy. It Even doesn't. though those sound like warm, cozy flavors, it's not like brown town mush city totally <laughs> braised and it's pork. not like braised and right, braised exactly. apples yeah it's exactly it seems like there's still a lot of texture to enjoy there a lot of texture and a you know like a lot of nice bright flavors with that i believe this is my recipe shouldn't i know i believe you finished with a little bit of vinegar if not do it like a little sherry vinegar I mean, you can say that brightness. about so many right? recipes just a little vinegar at the end a little acid of some kind. And now I'm just kind of going into the easy territory. Yes. Right? So I have a recipe for what I call the easiest. And I have really moved away from naming recipes like this because like, does every single recipe on the internet start with the easiest, the best, the greatest? Uh, the- <laughs> only because it's SEO friendly. Uh, it's and we should talk about this at some point in time, but anytime something is like we want to angle something family friendly in SEO. Uh, easy is one of those ways we can do it without saying it's family friendly. Totally. Um, and culturally, that's bad for so many reasons. The like easy recipe label, but it's okay. easiest. What? What is the easiest? Easiest what? roasted squash and apple soup. And for me, it really is the easiest because you roast the squash and you can just buy the pre chopped. So you're just tossing it with, you know olive oil, salt, pepper, putting in the oven. And then you just blend everything. (laughs) It's just very simple. You actually roast the squash and the apple together. And then you just blend it with broth. It's so easy. It's very simple. You can make a big vat. Another really easy go-to that I lean on in these seasons is the one pot cheesy sausage and rice Mm, that we developed. It is so good. It is so simple. And we actually developed it with the bonza. They don't call it orzo. They call it pasta, but it's that orzo shape. They call it their rice. They call it rice, actually. Yes. Yeah. But I love that. And I have to fully admit that I think reaching for bonza in this time of year is that old (laughs) when i haven't in a while might be some old diet culture influence at work subconsciously but i grabbed it for the first time in a while and i used it and i was like oh yeah this is really delicious and extra protein and tasted just like orzo to me so there you go one other thing this is the one that really breaks the rules uh, okay. slow cooked collard greens and olive oil. That is soft. It is braised. It is all the things I said I wasn't going to do, but I get tired of doing kale and spinach, which tend to be my go-tos by this time of year. Mm-hmm. And I feel like it's always around January, February that I really remember to pull collards into our diet more frequently. Yes. And collards are just best done braised and long cooked it's just the yes. way it goes and i really enjoyed trying this recipe collards and also um mustard greens i yes. wasn't i wasn't prepared to talk about it but you know that we always kick off new year's new, specifically new year's day we do the very southern tradition of hop and john yeah so we have like black eyed peas which are cooked like slow cooked with a little bit of onion and red pepper there's always rice And then we do braised collard greens, which I saved a turkey leg from smoking a turkey for Thanksgiving, specifically for collards for New Year's Day. And it's supposed to be like wealth, luck, and health. And once I remember that collard greens are delicious and somewhat easy to like make a big batch and then you can freeze portions. I love freezing them in super cubes because you can do like the one cup portion or the larger portion. But um. Then I'm like, oh, yes, we can have collard greens every single week Yeah, for all of January and February. And it's like the end of January where I'm like, oh, yeah, there's also mustard greens and other like hearty long cooking kales and greens like that. But yes, I'm so with you. And I don't even care that they're slow cooked. Right. They're so satisfying. (laughs) There can be texture to them. And that is another place where 
I always finish them with a little I vinegar. I was just going to say, yeah, exactly. So they do end up, you know, there's that earthiness. And if you've added bacon or a smoked turkey, like anything like that, you have the earthiness, you have the smokiness, and then you finish with vinegar and you get a little brightness. So it has all this tension and dynamics. It's really delicious. Yes. So I'm into it. And then, you know, we talked about the baking already. I, my kids, as I mentioned earlier, eat dessert every single night. So, you know, I, (laughs) back in November, maybe, I don't know, maybe early December, I was looking for something to bake for a quick weeknight dessert. And I kind of felt like baking, but I kind of didn't and time was running short. And I noticed the Bisquick in my, in my pantry. And I just did a quick search for Bisquick cake because that had never occurred to me and it worked. It was so good. So I'll link to the Simply Recipes recipe that I used, although I didn't follow it exactly. It's a Bisquick apple coffee cake. I actually added a little more sugar and it was still not as sweet as I wanted it to. And I, I'll tell you that I don't love super, super sweet things. So the recipe as it's written is really felt more like pancakey than cake, which is what I wanted. And I didn't have apples at the time I had blueberries and it worked beautifully. So just like five minutes to prep. And just you add whatever fruit's about to turn and you put a little coffee crumble on top and it baked up in 30 minutes. It was really fun and easy. Yes, we love that. Can we take a quick pause right here to hear from this week's sponsor? Absolutely. It's that season, Stacy. New year, <laughs> new you. <laughs> Listen, longtime listeners know that isn't our bag. You guys, we like you just the way you are. But if you are looking to freshen up your skincare routine, look no further. We are obsessed with Matter of Fact skincare. Matter of Fact has launched with two patent pending products that we've both been using for a while now. The Asorbic Acid 20 Brightening Sea Serum and the Minimalist Hydrating Cream. The two products work together in a very simple daily routine that we've both been easily able to maintain. The vitamin C serum goes on once a day and the hydrating cream morning and night. And the results are in healthy looking glowy skin all year long. It's amazing that matter of fact makes both of us feel great given that we have totally different skin types, skincare habits, and makeup routines. It's true, but even more than that, we both love that matter of fact is committed to making innovative products and giving us straightforward evidence-based information. As someone who has been overwhelmed by skincare choices and information, I can tell you how hard that is to find. Skincare doesn't have to be confusing or complicated. Whether you're looking to improve the look of skin brightness, fine lines, or your overall skin texture, give Matter of Fact a try this new year. Go to matterfact.com and enter the code D-I-J-F-Y at checkout for 15% off. That's matterofact.com code D-I-J-F-Y, short for didn't I just feed you. All right, Billis. So you say January is not the time for sugar and for baking for you, but what did you bake for Isaac for his birthday? So Isaac turned 15. Holy moly. Holy moly. And, you know, he doesn't have parties the same way, right? So he got together with a bunch of friends And then there was also a sleepover with just two friends. So it was really low key. He's doing his own thing, but his favorite flavor is cookies and cream. So I made a batch of cookies and cream cookies. And actually I, I know you love the preppy kitchen and I had never really followed a recipe from them before. So, or from him. So I followed his recipe and they were great. They were delicious. They were just what these guys wanted. I kind of love a cookie for a celebration. Like I think that they're, that people don't access that enough. It's like either an elaborate cake or a store-bought cake or recently the trend of like pies for birthdays, but like 
let's normalize birthday cookies. Yes, I agree with you. My kids love cookies. They're totally satisfied with cookies. Yes. You know, if they're homemade and it's a great flavor and it's what they want. And to make them more festive, you can always just make giant cookies Mm -hmm. instead of regular sized. You can dip them in chocolate or like half in chocolate and they look beautiful and put sprinkles on them and they look festive. I'm sure you have a lot of other ideas for how to make cookies seem a little bit more celebratory. Honestly, the fact that instead of just doing like a riff on an Oreo cookie, if Isaac loves cookies and cream, you know what I mean? Like making an Oreo from scratch. I love that you made like a one bowl cookie and just made it more festive. And I think anyone, like if your kid loves sugar cookies, why not just do like sprinkles in the batter and then do like an extra special frosting or icing on top of it? Like it doesn't take that much to make an, an even a basic cookie feel special. We talked right? about this with Jesse Shevchek last year. Totally. We were talking about his cookbook and how like there's glazes and frostings almost everywhere. You could take very basic cookies and make sandwich cookies out of them, which feels f- fun and festive. So yes, I just yeah. thought- Ooh, making marshmallow cream and using that as the sandwich. Yes. Mm. Mm. Okay, so Ella's birthday. Okay, so Megan, let's, it's your turn. I want to hear what you're cooking and eating, but let's start with Ella's birthday, which also just passed. I know. Well, Ella is such an enigma- She is a Capricorn through and through, but she loves her birthday. So we have celebrated with like cupcakes for classroom with um, very basic chocolate chip cookies per request. And then we always make a sheet cake together. So I've actually been relying a lot on our one bowl cake recipe that's on Didn't I Just Feed You. It's like very basic, but you can turn it into cupcakes or bake it in either quarter sheet pans or half a half sheet pan to make a sheet cake. Um, I also recently baked it just so that we could eat it (laughs) because I never get tired of having sweets on hand. (laughs) I'm the sweet, the resident sweet tooth. I also recently made Jesse Shevchek's smoked maple moon pie recipe from his book, Cookies. Um, And they're so easy and delicious. That was more like we had a little bit of time off still before we were back to recording. And I was like, ooh, I really want to make these and try them. And they were so good. And like you make a graham cracker cookie, you make marshmallow from scratch, which you just mentioned. And then you do like a chocolate dip on them. You were in... Chattanooga this fall, Uh this last fall, I should say. And you were saying how much you love moon pies, but that the, the like original moon pie is drier than you remember it being. Which AF. I was like, what is this? Right. (laughs) So I just had to try and see if it's, they were better and they are so much better. I recently had the same thing happen with oat, little Debbie oatmeal cream pies. Oh like, no, because I know those are your favorite. I love them. And I feel like it's really like in the last six months that the recipe has changed. Like it is not the soft candy, chewy like cookie on the outside. It is like kind of a dry, dusty cookie on the outside. So <laughs> plus one for making your nostalgic favorites at home. Although I, before I will make it at home and also... You did point out that I was eating mine at an airport (laughs) where I couldn't like microwave it or just warm it a little bit, which could have helped. So I'm going to give it one last shot. Okay. (laughs) I should just send you some. We should get like factory (laughs) fresh ones. Actually, our bus bus stop friends, a couple of them are Boy Scouts and they did sell moon pies instead of like the ubiquitous Boy Scout popcorn this fall. Um, And they promised them to be like fashion factory fresh, but I didn't think that they were that different. All right. Yes. Okay. Okay. What else are you eating, cooking, baking? I'm going to continue on the baking tip okay? because we promised that we were going to make butter mochi a big thing to happen in the fall when we have Genevieve Co. on an episode to talk about fall baking. And I bought the sweet rice flour that I needed. And then it just like literally sat in my pantry. So I did over the break have a chance to make butter mochi. And now I'm like on it. It's super easy. And it does give that like, it's not 
super sweet, but it has like the chewy satisfaction of candy, which I love. And I love like not having to buy gummy candies to get that satisfaction. Like if I have a candy craving, butter mochi is going to be the go-to. Oh, nice. I can't wait to make it. Okay. Okay. And then after like kind of a long hiatus, which is weird since moving, I haven't been making my biscuits as regularly. I don't know why. Um, Not even through the holidays? I made them for Brian's dad. His birthday's in November. And that was like his one request. I made him some to stash in his freezer. Um, And then I don't know, just like even Thanksgiving, we didn't have biscuits. And I was like, oh, this is kind of weird. But a couple of people in my extended family have some like, I don't want to say it's <laughs> diet culture, but it is like they're trying to take care of themselves in a different way. Uh-huh. So I didn't make biscuits then. And then in the middle of December, I was like, where are the biscuits, Megan? So I Wait, Megan, <laughs> get it together, I Megan. We're the biscuits. making um, my biscuit recipe, which we now have on Didn't I Just Feed You all the time. And it's like the most up-to-date version. Like I have a version on kitchen, which I know a lot of people use as a resource, but I recently changed the temperature that I like to use my butter at instead of calling for frozen butter, which can be hard to grate. I've just been using super cold butter from the fridge and grating it right away. And all of that is reflected in the version that you can find on our website. And we will, of course link to it in show notes and that and biscuits like buttery biscuits feel so opposite of like you you and your fresh and bright (laughs) (laughs) and my slow cooked collard greens and your slow cooked (laughs) collard greens yes but i i do want to say that we recorded an episode that is upcoming for our listeners community about winter salads recently and that has just got me Yes. Making so many winter salads, like sweet potato, pomegranate, red onion, avocado, just on greens all the time. I did grapefruit, avocado, fennel for dinner for friends recently. And that was so good with like a citrusy dressing. These are not like recipes that we'll link to. They're just ideas that are included in the listeners community episode that like stuck in my brain. So you know, once again, I'm going to remind you, you can join at any time and then you get access to all of those exclusive episodes from the past, what is it, eight months now? Yeah. Stacey? Yeah. Yep. Um, but one recipe that I saved in my Instagram saves and then I finally made in January was this brown butter, lentil, and sweet potato salad from the New York Times. It is like warm and soft, but also... <laughs> There's like fresh and crunchy flavors to it um, as well. So highly recommend that recipe. I don't know that my family loved it, but it was a good like, I'm going to make this for myself and then have the salad throughout this the week. This looks very you. Yes, right? It's like, it is a little brown, t- brown town, right? But there is <laughs> like <laughs> fresh creamy cheese on it. Uh, there's brown butter in the dressing. So like... Yes, you can't go wrong. Butter Queen recommends a brown butter lentil salad. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. It looks delicious. I'd have to use feta because I can't do goat cheese, but yes. Yes, right? Any kind of like that bright, sharp cheese would be great. I was even thinking like uh, an aged provolone sh- shaved on there would be really good too because that nice. has a little bit of bite to it and then some of that crunchy, crystal y texture. What about um, crumbled or shaved ricotta salada? Would that yes. have enough or would that, that be good? That would be good too. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Mm, looks good. Uh, speaking of recipes inspired by the podcast, when I made that like fennel grapefruit salad for friends, I also made Stacy's chicken salt and buka, which is just like such a lovely recipe for entertaining. I feel like because it's like really easy to make even while your guests are there and like serve. And I think of it as like very kid friendly. If you leave this, some of the sage off of a couple pieces, like yeah, totally. The kids at the table gobbled up the chicken pieces with prosciutto. They're like, yes, prosciutto wrapped chicken. I will eat that. Yeah, I mean, yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and then personally, like not for guests, we have been relying on our skillet lasagna recipe. I say our, like it lives on. Didn't I just feed you? 
so often. You know how much I love like brown cheese and cheese and pasta on a Monday night if you follow yes. me on Instagram. And um, I've recently done it with instead of like lasagna noodle pieces, just using the fresh or frozen ravioli yes. or tort- tortellini instead, which makes it cook even more quickly. So it's been a great weeknight thing with just like a salad on the side. That's awesome. I want to make that too. I haven't you made should. that in a long it's, time. That's so smart. Yes. And it's like super crowd pleasing. And anytime I share it on Instagram, people are like, oh my gosh, I need that. I need that recipe. And I'm like, oh, you can make it without a recipe. But then I realized we have our easy lasagna. Um, and so much better than building a whole oh, lasagna. Totally. Yes. Shout out to our broccoli cheddar dip recipe. <laughs> okay. I'm happy to do that. I Shout know. it out. Shout it out. And again, this feels a little bit opposite of what you are saying about right and crunchy flavors. But the, my strategy for doing like snack dinners is one sort of like centerpiece thing. We talked about this in a holiday menu episode that went out to our listeners group about the idea of like doing ham and biscuits as part of a snack platter. So when I do broccoli cheddar dip, we also have like a bunch of cut up veggies and stuff on the side and just makes a super easy weeknight meal that feels warm and cozy, but then we're also eating like a lot of fresh vegetables. And I'm just reminded like, I fall into the rut of like lunchbox vegetables. I know that you do too, where it's like, I have the baby peppers and I have the English cucumbers, but a reminder that like jicama can be thinly sliced and turned into a dip. If you serve a little spoon with the dip, endive is great for grownups. My kids are not really into it, but I love it. And then you just like make a little cup, broccoli cheddar, endive, so good. What else have I been cooking this month? Ooh, we just had our episode about ramen noodles. Oh, yeah. And I am still on that ramen tip. Totally. I've ordered, but they have not arrived yet, the Momofuku, their ramen noodles, which are like a wider noodle, but it just felt like a fun little luxury splurge to try out. Oh, I can't wait to hear. Because it is, it's like, it is like the top ramen that we talked about in that episode where it's, it's affordable and you can like use the noodles and do your own sauce or seasoning, but then it also comes with a seasoning packet. And I'm excited to try that with the seasoning packet specifically on like some ground pork or ground chicken to top those noodles. I think that'll be like a really fun weeknight meal. Oh, Megan. Okay. So your Momofuku noodles reminded me that I recently made an order. I haven't tried it yet, but I'm so excited. I was thinking about the exhaustion I feel for cooking after the holiday season. So I've been saving these. So Chef Roy Choi, Kogi Barbecue, a bunch of other projects out in LA, love his food. He launched a new company that does seasoning mixes. Mm. Okay. They're like flavor packets. And it reminded me because you were talking about the idea of Momofuku's ramen flavor packets. Yes. They're all um, gluten free, plant based, no fillers. And the first one he launched with is called Chizio Pepe Seasoning Mix. And it's basically a plant based cacio e pepe for pasta. That's just basically ready in like 10 minutes. Like you take the powder, you mix it with your choice of whatever, like a little pasta cooking water, maybe plant-based milk, and then you toss it with the pasta and dinner's done. And it looks so good. (laughs) I've been saving it for my tired, desperate night. This is me opening a tab in another window to order it right now. Uh, I feel like now we both owe a report back of the things that we bought for ourselves in January and tried and if we would buy them again. And you know where I'm going to say that we should do that, right? Yeah. In our favorite place on the internet, our community. Our community. And hey, you know what else? And we'll get to that too. Our newsletter, because when we find new products that we really love, we share that every Friday too. So you guys... You need to inspire us because we love that too. And we'll keep you abreast of all of the new things we try. Our Didn't I Just Feed You listeners community. We hope you've joined us there. But if not, you can always join for free at didn't I just feed you.com backslash community. 
Or, you know, if you want those bonus episodes and those other goodies too, you can join our supporting community. You can also keep in touch with us on Instagram where we are at Didn't I Just Feed You or by signing up for that lovely newsletter that Stacey mentioned. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to Didn't I Just Feed You wherever you get your podcasts or if you're already a subscriber, leave us a rating or review. Those don't only bring us such joy. They also help other busy home cooks find us. A huge thank you to our editor, Samantha Getzik. I'm Megan. And I'm Stacy. Stay sane and well-fed until next week. Be sure to subscribe to Didn't I Just Feed You wherever you're listening. And don't forget to rate and review. 